Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of NCLEX RN45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about coronavirus. So, coronaviruses are a large viral family. Six of them are known to infect humans, four of which caused about a quarter of our cases of the common cold. And then there were two, SARS and MRSA, which were much more dangerous. And this novel coronavirus fits into that family. And it, it has some characteristics of the SARS, and then the fact that it came from China, it slightly spreads from the animals and has some ability to do severe diseases. But unlike SARS, it can spread pretty rapidly within the community. So by now, you've likely heard about the coronavirus from Wuhan or 2019 novel coronaviruses, which is the cause of an outbreak that seems to have begun at the marketplace with live animals in Wuhan on December 12, 2019 and has since spread around the world and has affected thousands of people. Now, first things first, there are a lot of different types of coronaviruses. Some mainly affects humans, whereas others mainly affect other animals like bats and camels. And these animal species are called viral reserva. The common coronavirus that normally circulate among humans are typically benign. And this causes about a quarter of all common cold illnesses. But occasionally, coronaviruses that usually circulate in an animal reserva mutate just enough to where they are able to start infecting and causing diseases in humans. If they are given an opportunity, one of these animal's viruses infect the human population. There is usually no immunity among the human populations since it's considered a new or coronavirus or novel coronaviruses. So the virus can spread quickly and can cause serious diseases. Remember the SARS back in 2002 that was a coronavirus that hopped over from the bats to the civets, which is a cat-like mammal and then over to humans. And in 2012, there was MRSA, which was a coronavirus that hopped from bats to camels and a few decades ago and then circulated among the camels for quite some time before infecting humans. So what's the likely source of the Wuhan coronavirus? Well, it looks like it also ultimately came from the bats. Now, the way this happens is that initially a sick animal, let's say a sick bat, sheds the virus in their urine and poop. And that can get aerosolized and inhaled by person making them sick. After that initial person or group of people gets infected, these people might sneeze or cough, allowing the virus to get into the air and in fact others, they come into contact with them. Like family members if they stay home sick or healthcare workers and other patients if they go to the clinic or hospital. That sort of transmission is called person-to-person -person spread. Now, viruses are given reproductive numbers or r not based on how quickly they spread. An r not of one means that an infected person passes it on one to one person. And an r naught of two means that one person spreads it to two new people, and so forth. If the r naught is below one, the infection peters out. If it's at one, it stays steady. If it's above one, then it continues to spread. Things like an immunized populations or aggressive isolations or sick patients can help drive down the r naught. Early estimates in China are that the Wuhan coronavirus scores an r naught of around 2.5. That's faster than doubling. And that the affected areas have been blocked down in various ways to help down the transmission. It's also really important to point out that even though there have been individuals with the disease in countries around the world, person-to-person -person spread has mainly been seen in China. And the most cases outside of China were individuals who initially got illnesses in China and then traveled outside and developed symptoms there. Now, let's say that you're someone exposed to carrier and that you catch the virus. If that happens, the incubation period, the time between the initial infection and the onset of infections seems to be roughly three to six days based on the early data. And when symptoms do begin, they usually include the fever, cough, and shortness of breath. The diagnosis can be confirmed using DNA tests. Now, while most coronaviruses are relatively benign, some causes serious problems. 
with SARS, 25% of patients required mechanical ventilations and 10% died. In MRSA, over 50% of patients required mechanical ventilations and 36% died. So far, the good news with the coronavirus from Wuhan is that it appears that the severity is lower, with fatality rate around 4% or even lower. And broad-spectrum antiviral drugs and vaccines are aggressively being researched and see if they can be used to help treat and prevent the diseases. Although no vaccines are available at the moment, so you may be wondering besides sharing this video with friends and family, what else should be done? Well, for most people in the US, nothing different. Wash your hands and avoid touching your eyes and mouth. This is the area known as your T zone because it's shaped like letter T and is common entry point for viruses into the body. For those in China, it's a good idea to work from home as much as possible, avoid crowds, and if possible, avoid healthcare facilities unless you are sick.